Allah says in the Quran, وَرَاوَدَتْهُ الَّتِي هُوَ فِي بَيْتِهَا عَن نَفْسِهِ وَغَلَّقَتِ الْأَبْوَابَ وَقَالَتْ هَيْتَ لَكَ قَالَ مَعَاذَ اللَّهِ Which means, Allah says, and the one whom he stayed at her house, meaning his master, the wife of his master, she entered the home, locked the door, and seduced Yusuf alayhi salam. She said to him, do whatever you want with me. So you got a handsome man in front of her. I want to just paint a picture for you here, brothers and sisters, so you can understand the intensity of this situation. You have a handsome man who is a slave. A slave means no one cares about his reputation. So he's got no reputation to lose. Number two, no one is to blame him. He's a slave. No one blames a slave. Number three, he's irresistibly beautiful. Number four, he's got a powerful woman before him who can protect him. Number five, she's wealthy. She can look after him. So if he does what she wants, he'll live like a king. Number six, She's beautiful, so she's attractive. Number seven, she's locked the doors and the windows. No one can see anything. So as they say, this is the perfect crime. The perfect crime. In the eyes, unfortunately, of the modern day world that we live in, this is the perfect, what? The perfect paradise. The perfect setting, the perfect paradise. Lustful beautiful you'd think that you're mad or insane if you don't do something with a woman in this situation however this is not a normal man and at the same time this is not a normal situation so I don't want anyone to think well he's a prophet I don't think you had a situation like his ever before I don't think any of us will have a situation like that maybe halfway there but not like that so Allah gives every person a test in the way that they deserve it, in the way that is justifiable. So the prophets, Allah punished them worse than us and tested them triple, quadruple, ten times more than us. So then anyone say, oh, he's a prophet, I can't do what he does. The test for him was triple, double, quadruple than yours. However, this is an example for us. Allah forgives us a little bit more than the prophets. So he, there's a balance. She entered into the room and said to him, Hey, Talak. So number eight, she says to him, I'm all yours, do whatever you want. Sorry for that expression, but this is the way it is. To tell you that every single opportunity with ease and lust and temptation is there. Hey, Talak. And what did he say? He said, I seek refuge in Allah. I ask Allah to protect me. It's not like someone's coming with a knife about to slit his, his throat. Nor is someone holding a gun to his head. Okay, that's when you would say, Oh Allah, protect me, please save me. This is, you know, someone's grabbed and throwing off the cliff and say, Oh Allah, save me. In this situation, Oh Allah, save me from what? From falling prey to lust. From committing zina. Not only that, he was so afraid of this heinous act that he said he tried to plead to her reminding her with her conscience saying innahu rabbi ahsana mathway your husband my master he's looked after me please don't make me do something to betray my master he's been good to me i don't want to be bad to him have some conscious woman have some brains woman but she didn't agree she chased after him as she was about to grab him allah says in the quran was al-bab what a, he ra they raced to the door. On your marks, get set, go. They raced to the door. Who's going to get to there first? Yusuf alayhi salam wants to get to the door to escape. She wants to race him to the door to stand in his way so he doesn't escape. The opposite. La ilaha illallah. Allah says on top of that, وَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَابِ وَقَدَّتْ قَمِيصَهُ مِنْ دُبُرِ She even managed to grab him 
by his shirt from the back. And she pulled him aggressively until she ripped his shirt. So there was an aggressive seduction here. Not by a woman to a woman, but by a woman to a man. A prophet of Allah. Does that exist today? Which men are like this today? Which youth are like this? Any of them left? You know, this person once said in front of friends, he said, you know, I've never been to a nightclub before. Everyone looked at him with shock because he said, I've never been inside of a nightclub. All of a sudden, a nightclub not being in there is a shock to everyone. Another one said, you know, I've never kissed a girl before. Everyone looked at him in absolute dismay. Not only in dismay, they thought he's a loser. And now they make uh, movies about, you know, men who are losers because they can't get women and they call them wimps and they're cowards. How things have changed around. Where women have lost their absolute value, men have lost their value. And this type of behavior is considered to be noble and courageous. Allahu Akbar. You're a warrior. You're a hero. If you can serve your lusts and temptations. And then you have issues of rape and crime. And then you've got laws, especially in Western countries that can't even solve anything. Just the other day I read in the paper about a man who was convicted in the court of law in Sweden. He was convicted of rape. You know what kind of rape? It says that the woman, she agreed to have intercourse with him. But, excuse me for the expression, he used some kind of contraception, I don't want to say its name, and the contraception broke. Based on that, she won in the court by claiming rape, even with her consent. So now their own laws can't even solve their own problems. They bring more laws that bring more problems for them.